Hello everyone, and welcome to my Emmerdale News YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up beginning in 2024. Emmerdale saw a number of significant changes to the Hamlet, including the terrible passing of Heath Hope and the arrival of Ruby Fox Milligan and Ella Forster. What comes next then? Well, some teases and spoilers about what to expect over the next few months have already been revealed through previous press releases and producer interviews. Many of these storylines have already been revealed here on Digital Spy, as you might imagine, but in case you're having trouble keeping up, here's a helpful synopsis that includes all the important information in one convenient location. Recently, Ella Forster, played by Paula Lane, a former Coronation Street star, was introduced by Emmerdale executives. When the kind and considerate character defended Mandy Dingle at a veterinarian ball, she lost her job. Luckily, Ella's fortunate meeting with Manpreet Sharma created a new opportunity, allowing her to settle down in the hamlet and begin working in the doctor's office. Liam Kavanagh, a local physician, has also taken an interest in Ella, and in the upcoming weeks, their relationship will be further investigated. Although Ella hasn't yet displayed any indications of a sinister secret or cover plan, the original announcement of her coming raised the possibility that this would eventually come to pass. Ella is a complex and multi-layered character who comes to the village and certainly makes an impact. Emmerdale producer Kate Brooks stated last year, Is there more to this seemingly good-natured woman than first meets the eye? We are absolutely thrilled to welcome an actor of Paula's caliber to the show, and we can't wait to have her light up our screens. Due to her involvement in Heath's death, Emmerdale adolescent Angelica King will spend eight months in a secure children's home starting next month. Even if Angelica's punishment is not as severe as it could be, her loved ones still suffer because they have fewer opportunity to see her because she is being moved to Bristol. The actress who plays Angelica's mother, Nicola King, Nicola Wheeler, recently discussed the long-term effects of Angelica's imprisonment on the family. It seems like a lifetime at first, she remarked. However, as the novel progresses, Nicola and Jimmy come to the realization that given the short amount of time, just eight months, they are being absurd. However, isn't it hell on earth when you can't see your daughter every day and aren't there for her? Also, they have two other children, Carl and Elliot, to think about. I don't think they'll handle this well. Nicola can't handle it at first, so she starts to lash out. But Jimmy gives her a hard talk and tells her, this is what it is. We must address the matter. It's also a relief when Bob holds out an olive branch, and that sense of relief sets them on a different path. Nicola went on to discuss the drama that will undoubtedly arise when Angelica is released in a few months. Looking ahead, I would just say, what is to come? For when Angel leaves this location, what kind of person will she be? Isn't that the main question? Nicola and Jimmy have no influence or authority over her during eight months of her life. I believe that any parent who has experienced this would find it quite upsetting. The thing that bothers me is that they are essentially giving up their child. As 2024 goes on, Rona will encounter more difficulty since she is adamant about continuing to battle for baby Ivy. After Gus suggested a compromise to keep them both out of trouble with the law, the local vet recently realized that her ex-husband was playing her. Once Rona had complied with his requests, he intended to do a runner with Ivy. The actress who plays Rona, Zoe Henry, recently acknowledged that she is still unsure of the precise ending of this tale. She stated, during her appearance on ITV's This Morning, I'm not sure. We have some advanced knowledge, but not much. This spring, Eric Pollard finds himself entangled in Amit Sharma's dark plot, as the new antagonist sets him up as a fresh victim. When Amit finds out that Eric, the previous B&B &B boss, is among the wealthiest people in the area, he starts to get interested in him. Will Eric be duped when he approaches him with a deal that looks too good to be true? In the upcoming weeks, Aaron Dingle, Kane Dingle, and Caleb Milligan should expect to get some important test findings. 
in order to find out if they carry the defective BRCA2 gene, which can be handed down via families, all three characters have consented to get their genes tested. Chas recently learned that the defective gene caused her breast cancer, and she urged her brothers Kane and Caleb, as well as her son Aaron, to get checked. Examples of genes that, if they change, can increase a person's risk of acquiring cancer include BRCA1 and BRCA2. This increases the likelihood of developing breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and prostate cancer. The sequences involving Aaron, Kane, and Caleb are only a small portion of Chas' ongoing plot, which will be developed over the next few months. We were acutely aware of how important it was to explore this when this story was first pitched, producer Kate Brooks of Emmerdale recently said. We wanted to highlight the effects on not only Chas, but also her immediate family because of her strong character and the fact that her family has a history of breast cancer. Chas is, after all, the cornerstone of the Dingles. With Lucy Parveter's innate ability to showcase Chas's vulnerabilities beneath her hardened exterior, we knew she was absolutely the right character to play this with. The long-term plan for Tom and Belle King's domestic abuse plot was recently revealed by Emmerdale in response to recent alarming scenes featuring the newlyweds. The story will continue to examine coercive control, physical abuse, and mental abuse in later scenes. Emmerdale also intends to delve into the expanding field of technological abuse, in which manipulative spouses employ covered cameras and trackers as part of their evil schemes. Laura Shaw, the producer of the show, recently stated, Soaps are in the extraordinary position of being able to highlight what happens behind the public face of an abusive relationship over a longer period of time. Because they care so much about these individuals, the audience may even know them better than their own friends and relatives. Even though it can be terrifying to watch this kind of plot develop, it is crucial that we use our platform to raise awareness of domestic abuse and support those who have been silenced far too frequently. The Bell actor, Eden Taylor Draper, added to TV Times, Tom always has an explanation for his actions. He'll turn on her right away with something horrifying. I'm really sorry, it's my fault. Bell then says, he can take advantage of her long-standing mental health problems and her sense of burdensomeness to further weaken her. The charities we've worked with have said that tech control is massively on the rise. Amy Wyatt and Maddie Barton announced in a recent show that their wedding is now scheduled for April 17. Will there be problems before the big day now that Amy's mother Carrie is back in the village and causing havoc? Linda Nolan has expressed her dissatisfaction with Emmerdale's handling of a recent plot point in which a character received a breast cancer diagnosis. The singer Linda Nolan has taken issue with Emmerdale's handling of a recent breast cancer plotline. Following the devastating scenes that aired after Chas Dingle's Lucy Pargeter breast cancer diagnosis, the performer begged ITV executives to go gentler. When Chas's fans learned in January that she had the same type of breast cancer as her late mother Faith Dingle, they were left feeling very saddened. Linda expressed her satisfaction with the show's treatment of breast cancer in a recent story for The Mirror. She was unhappy with the way everything had been handled up to this point, though. Soaps do a great job raising important awareness, but I find myself wishing they'd go gentler. The woman stated in reference to Chas Dingle's breast cancer diagnosis. Her panic is yelling at me. She begged the screenwriters to find the positivity too. The 65-year-old has been fighting an incurable secondary breast cancer since 2017 after receiving a cancer diagnosis 18 years ago. After receiving therapy for breast cancer in 2006, Linda disclosed a third recurrence of the disease in her liver in 2020. She then disclosed that the illness had gone to her brain. The actress' sister Colleen recently talked candidly about her own skin cancer scare on Loose Women, proving that she is not the first Nolan sibling to battle the disease. Sadly, 52-year-old Bernie Nolan, their sister, passed away from breast cancer in 2013. Three years ago, their other sister Anne received a second breast cancer diagnosis. She is currently cancer-free. In another section of her piece, 
Linda asked readers to sign a petition requesting that authorities allow people with breast cancer who require it to receive a life-extending treatment. Don't overlook. Linda Nolan says she hopes they look like George Clooney and that she's ready for love. Linda Nolan thinks that Harry's gap will be healed by the news of Charles's sickness. After experiencing pain from her cancer treatment, Linda Nolan gets an emotional letter. Any Govuset follows the NHS in England, refusing to use the medication in her too, despite the fact that it is already prescribed in Scotland. This is truly frightening, Linda said, describing the present limits around the drug. I'd urge readers to sign the petition for n 2s approval to be reconsidered. Women are advised to remain vigilant, seek medical attention from a doctor when necessary, and follow through on treatment plans when necessary, with positive results. But to be refused the medication and possibly have to wait a few more months or years. That's a plot that belongs in a horror movie, she said ominously. No matter where they live, Everyone should have access to the drug because lives are at risk. They are not being satisfied. Over 65,000 people have signed the petition that Breast Cancer Now, a charity, started. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.